Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Teresa Palmer about the Twin, which is going to be streaming on Shutter May sixth. Thank you for doing this. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. This is not your first horror movie. You know, it it's not. <laughs> what do you love about this genre specifically? Um, goodness, I don't know. I have done quite a few horror films in my life. Um, I had someone say earlier today, oh, Wolf Creek was your first horror film. I was like, it was and it wasn't because I was an extra in the background in the pool party scene, but it's on my IMDb. So everyone's like, wow, you're in that amazing film, Wolf Creek. I was like, if it's a blink and you miss it, moment I'm in a bikini in the background behind the lead guy um but look I love uh being afraid I love I love that feeling that you get when uh, it's the same reason I really enjoy riding roller coasters it's that exhilaration and the adrenaline um I love exploring the unknown and the darkness maybe because it's quite a contrast from my own life yeah all my gaggle of laughing happy jovial children um but I I just thought this script in particular was very cool because it was it's such a standalone you you pull the horror out of it and the film can stand on its own as a dramatic piece it's about the loss of a child and how that affects the dynamic of a family. So that in and of itself was very interesting. And then you fold all the horror elements. And then for me, that's the perfect formula. It's great you say that because I'm going to tell you honestly, I love the film and I'll tell you why I love the film because there's a specific reason and it kind of has to do with what you just said. The film, people are going to see it. The horror movie fans are going to enjoy it because it's got the traditional moments of a horror film. Let's be honest, right? It's got the jump scares. It's got the creepy, yeah. chilling components. It's in there. But I am a big fan of these scripts that are making, like, I don't want to go into big spoilers, but conversations between your character and his son and your husband that kind of yeah. make you feel like, wait a second, like, why did they say that to each other type thing? You know what I mean? Yeah. The chilling kind of conversations. What do you think about that? Because it's heavy in this film. Dialogue is scary in this film, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, the, the dialogue is so rich and laid and very complex. I definitely, when I first read it, I just thought, oh, I had this. The, I felt like I had the weight of the world on my shoulders diving into this family dynamic. It feels incredibly fractured, which yeah. is obviously quite normal for a situation like that. You're dealing with grief, you're dealing with your sorrow, but also there's so much guilt and then there's bubbling resentment there at each other, at your partner, at the remaining child, your surviving child. There's still a lot of stuff to unpack between them and then they just decide to pick up and move themselves to an even more isolating situation which is another country so far away from you know all their support and their loved ones so it it, it for me it was just going deeper and deeper into a horrifying situation and even take out the traditional horror aspect yes just the state of her mind was horrifying is terrifying um, but I will say as a performer, it was very liberating because it meant that I didn't have any, I didn't have any um, constraints really. I could try so many different things. She's, she's dealing with, um, you know, the, the lines between reality and, and fiction, they're quite yeah. blurred. So she can, um, I was able to try lots of bold things with performance and, and that was very exciting for me. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's always tough doing these interviews because there's certain things you want to talk about, but you don't want to spoil yeah. it. But like, I know you're doing, you're doing a great job. You know what that. I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Therese Palmer is a storyteller. That's what you do. Basically. Is it safe to say that one of your favorite things about storytelling is the fact that you can transform and dive in to these different worlds of the discovery of witches and the twin? Like, is that a standout in terms of, you know, the career as a storyteller, Teresa? It's very fun. Yeah. It's, I, I enjoy that process. Um, it's, I probably got into it because it was 
exhilarating. The escapism was very exhilarating. Mm -hmm. And you get to, um, you know, it's like playing make-believe, which is Mm -hmm. always what we love to do as a child. And we get to do it as a professional. (laughs) It's a really, um, it's a really interesting job. And uh, I actually find it really cathartic too. I get to find and discover parts of myself that I didn't even really know existed. And you get to do that uh, under the skin of all these different characters and um, try on different hats. And I, I absolutely love it. And I will say, I feel like the more I do it, the more I evolve as a human being. And um, I get to, you know, garner different perspectives from trying on so many different characters and opinions and um these people are thrust into all these diverse situations that it's really um it's just fascinating I love the job is you know being a storyteller is a really um exciting aspect of my life it's really funny because I remember another interview I did a while ago we were talking about storyteller and my guest said that he was at a birthday party for his friend's son and you know um, a, the, a kid came up to him and asked him, like, what do you do? You know what I mean? And he says, you know, how do I explain storytelling to, you know, a 10-year-old? And he's like, I play pretend for a living, <laughs> which is basically what it is. I know. Right? <laughs> even, yeah, even my kids are still like, like, what? I My kids put on one of my movies the other day because like, this will be fun. They put it on. It was Ride Like a Girl. Mm-hmm. Um, and my daughter is only three. And I was like, oh, how is she, is she going to be really weirded out that that's mom on camera? And so now she's labeled the mom in the movie as her mom. Mm-hmm. But me, physical mom, I'm mom too. I'm the new mom. And that was the old mom. I was mm-hmm. like, what is going on in that little mind of hers? It must be such a bizarre concept for yeah. like my kids in particular to figure out what it is that I do. Well, when they're, old, love it. <laughs> when they're older, I hope you show them I am number four because I feel like they will have to re- appreciate it more when they're older because that's a great film. So, <laughs> uh, Thank you. Yeah, I, my oldest, my eight-year-old, he really wants to watch Warm Bodies and I just don't think he's old enough yet. I was like, Two more years and you're in. You're it's in. also Many the appreciate. It's also the it's also the appreciation factor too. When they're young, they want to appreciate certain things and effects and everything as yes. well. <laughs> yeah, he saw a sorcerer's apprentice mm-hmm. and he thought that was really cool. Yeah, he's like right at the perfect age. He's like, oh, that was amazing, mom. I know <laughs> it's so great. Thank you so much for your time. And May six tomorrow, uh, the twin is streaming on Shutter. Teresa, it was great chatting with you. Thank you so much. Lovely chatting with you too. Thanks, Katie. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.